Well, good morning. My name is Don. I'm one of your pastors here at Legacy, and whether you're joining us here in person or joining us online, it is just great to have you as part of our Legacy family this morning. For the last few weeks, we have been exploring the engines of our lives. We started by checking the, out the warning lights. That is our spiritual health, um, our connection with Jesus. And we, in, we were encouraged to continue to find new ways to connect with God. And then we took a look under the hood at our mental health, making sure that we take time to look closely at that our emotional and psychological health, and that it is love, empathy, and connection that, that we give uh, because of the experiences we received uh, from Jesus Christ that help us. Last week, we talked about taking time for regular maintenance, our physical health. We, we are to take care of this, this temple that we are given, healthy bodies, healthy minds, healthy spirit. And we also learn that Cheetos do not turn into carrots as you eat them, no matter how hard we pray. Today we are going to talk about the rules of the road, our relationships. Now each part of a truck, a car, a van, or whatever form of conveyance you use, each part is needed, it's necessary, and somewhat required for the rest of the vehicle to run and perform correctly. Now your truck is one of the safest forms of transportation on the road uh, when it has doors. Your car has to have four wheels to drive. Well, most of the time. Your car can look amazing on the outside, but if it has no engine, you're not going to go anywhere. This is a 1987 GT5S, which sold for $229,000. Now, it is a nice-looking car. It is in perfect shape the body and the interior, but it has no engine. Now, when you buy this car, it does come with a certificate that it was owned by Carroll Shelby himself. Yeah, great, but certificates don't, certificates don't drive cars. All parts of a vehicle are needed, and they need to work together so it can perform its best. The same goes for us. In order for us to continually perform at our top level, we need to be in harmony with those around us. We need to be in, in right relationship. Even for those of us like me who rate at high to a, extre the extreme range in the introvert scale, we still need relationships with family and friends, and sometimes even strangers. We need them. We need, to, we need to know how to act, how to be, how to communicate positively, openly, and with the love of Christ. We are better when we do life together and thus keeping our engines at peak running performance. We must be in, in some form of face-to-face -face fellowship with other people. Now, James, the half-brother of Jesus and author of the books that bear his name, writes to other believers to encourage them to show the love of Jesus in how they treat and act towards each other, towards family and towards friends and, yes, even strangers. To remind them of the rules of the road. To remind them by doing so will bring people to the cross of Jesus Christ. That is Legacy's mission also. Is to be an intentional community of impact. Growing hope, healing, and wholeness through Jesus Christ. 
Now, these qualities are all part of the reality that shapes our lives, builds faith, and, and it cannot be just something we believe in our heads. It has to be something that we do. It has to be part of our daily lives. Today, we, we turn to James chapter 4, if you'd like to find that in whatever Bible device you'll be using today, and as always, it'll be on the screen behind me. In James chapter 4, James not only raises the question of the cause of conflict, but he gives specific causes of it, and he answers the question, and he give gives cures for the problem. Now, isn't it amazing how prone we are to conflict as human beings? It seems so easy to find any excuse or reason for conflict in just about anything. Someone is always unhappy about something that someone else said or what someone else did. You can pick up any daily newspaper or look online or any media source and you can find multiple stories of conflict. There is conflict among nations. There is conflict in our own nation. There is even conflict among our churches and in our families. Those places that should be most known for peace are often marked with conflict. Two old friends were sitting on their front porch one Sunday afternoon when one turned to the other and he said, Bob, he goes, I need to tell you something. He goes, something I have never told another soul ever. He goes, you know, my wife and I, we've been married for 30 years. This is really tough to say, but every day for those 30 years, we have fought. Well, Bobby just couldn't believe this. He just couldn't believe that this was happening. And so he goes, every day? Every day? And his friend says, every day. Every day we have fought for 30 years. And again, Bob didn't know, really know what to say, so he says, well, even today, even Sunday? He goes, even Sunday, even today. Even today, we had a big fight. Bob goes, well, what happened? What happens? And then his friend said, well, today that woman came crawling to me on her hands and knees. Wow, Bob said. What did she say? Come up from underneath that bed, you coward, and fight me like a man. It's funny, but also terrifying at the very same time. But I have seen some marriages that are almost like that. They just fight. Sometimes it seems like people just like to fight. They fight at home. They, they fight at work. They fight with relatives. They, they fight with their neighbors. I was in a shoe store just this last week, and there was a lady who was yelling at a wall of purses. I'm not kidding. She was yelling at the purses. I'm convinced that you could put some people in a room all by themselves with nothing else, and they would find something to yell about. But most people don't like to fight all of the time. We just like it some of the time. Okay, James, chapter 4, starting with the first one. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. So James isn't wasting a lot of time here. He gets right to the point. He says, what is your problem? I'll tell you what your problem is. You're a bunch of jealous, greedy babies. Okay, maybe I elaborated on the original text a little bit, but it's, the context is still there. I have been asked this question most of my life. Why are you angry? What makes you 
want to fight with everybody? And the answer is usually the same. People are annoying. <laughs> Life would be much easier if people just did things my way. I mean, think about it. What is the cause of most of our arguments? It's other people. It's always other people. It's so easy, isn't it? To blame, to blame others for that which rips and tears at the fabric of human relationships. It's okay. Turn to the person next to you and just tell them it's their fault. It's easy, isn't it? You don't need much practice for that. You and I don't have to work very hard to find someone or, or something that we can blame. But the truth is, at what James is telling us, that we need to look within ourselves for the source of conflict. You and I need to be very honest with ourselves. We may think of ourselves as, as godly people, followers of Christ, and we are, but at the same time, deep within ourselves, we have that gray-bearded old man that's just grumpy and selfish sometimes. If everyone I come into contact with has a problem, then maybe I need to take a step back, and I need to look at myself and see what the problem is. James describes us, James describes us as people who, who want something, but we can't get it, and therefore we're unhappy. We then become restless and um, disconnected and driven by pleasure. And the more we are driven by this pleasure principle, the more we, are, we want to fight and wage war. We see what people have. We see their toys. We see where they live, what they drive, the job they have, and how much money they make. And we think, why don't I have that? Why don't I have those things? I'm a good person. I work hard. And so we begin to desire those things, more things. And, and some are good. Some are not so good. Sometimes we receive what we desire, and sometimes we don't. And the trouble comes in is when that desire with that desire, we start to think that we get that attitude that we deserve those things. And that's when jealousy walks into the picture. And the problem with jealousy is that that leads us to think that whatever we want, we have to have, whether good or bad. That desire and jealousy starts to become frustration and greed then we start to lie, and we start to cheat. We start to argue, gossip, cause dissension. We start to fight, and we look to destroy others, and in some cases, even kill to get what we want and have the things go our way. We find ourselves far, far away from being right with God and in right relationship with him. In verse 4, James calls these people out. He says, you adulterers. You and I can easily become adulterous people. Now, most of the time we hear that word and it brings to mind sexual adultery. But this kind of covetedness, selfishness, pleasure-seeking is also is also in this adulterous category. Whatever is that deepest desire, that deepest level, it all leads to spiritual adultery in which is an unfaithfulness to God. We are having an affair with the world when we are jealous and godlessly seeking out more and more earthly pleasures. That is unfaithfulness to God. James reminds us that God is a jealous God and he is not willing to share us with the world. We may be prone to conflict because of 
selfishness, jealous, and, and spiritual adulterous desires. But we do not have to wait for the breakdown. We do not have to wait to use the Coke can and the barbed wire to fix the parts of our engine. I know some of you are old enough in this room to know how to fix your car that way. Some of us know how to do that, and but we don't have to wait for that breakdown. We can maintain ourselves. We can maintain and use the rules of the road. Use the rules to maintain a healthy, positive Christian walk with Jesus Christ. There is a cure for this conflict. Now you probably all remember the classic, <clears throat> excuse me, the classic peanut situation between Charlie Brown and Lucy, where over and over again, Lucy offers to hold the football for Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown backs up and he runs to kick it. And just before he kicks the ball, Lucy yanks the ball away, and Charlie Brown goes flying through the air and lands flat on his back. One day, Lucy offers to hold the ball again for for Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown declines, and he says he's not going to fall for that again. As soon as Lucy is accused of her wrongdoings, she begins to weep, and she says, Oh, you are so right. I admit in the past that I have been cruel, played mean tricks on you, Charlie Brown, but I have seen the errors of my ways. I have seen the hurt in your eyes. Won't you forgive and give this poor, repentant girl another chance? So Charlie Brown says, okay. And so he backs up. He runs up to the football, and just as he's about to give it a kick, she yanks the ball away again, and Charlie Brown goes flying through the air and lands on his back. Lucy walks away with her friend and comments, unfortunately, recognizing your faults, and actually changing your ways are two different things. True, isn't it? We all would have to agree and recognize the pro recognizing the problem is only part of the solution. Doing something about it is often much more difficult. James's prescription for the problem is this, starting in verse 7. So humble yourself before the Lord. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. We must humble ourselves before the Lord. Some translations say, use the word submit, and a lot of people have problems dealing with that word submit. But when put in the proper context, they mean the same thing. It means to subject yourself to another. To humble ourselves, to yield to the authority or to the will of another. In this context, we are to humble ourselves to God. In humbling or submitting to God, we, we, will be an, we are able to obey God rather than to follow our own desires. When we find ourselves in con conflict with others, we want to fight and we want to argue, make sure that we prove our own point and put that other person in their place. But if we have put God in charge of our lives and we are living in submission to him, then his peace will rule over our lives. And if we can admit that, that we have conflicting drives within us and keep coming to the Lord in that submission, then we will find the strength to be more like God in our interactions with other people. Move past the, the thinking that we have to be right and even acknowledging that we have this issue 
we can still get the same results that we need, but we can also show the love of Christ at the same time and point to the saving graces of Christ's cross. And by doing so, we will be able to resist the devil. If you have not humbled yourself before God, then it will not be possible to resist the devil. The Bible says, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bible says that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. If we cannot be humble enough to allow God to, to control, then how can he work within us? How can the Holy Spirit dwell within us? Until Christ comes into our lives and becomes the Lord of our lives, then we cannot resist the devil. James says, come close to God and God will come close to you. What an amazing, simple truth. The Lord wants to walk with you and with me. He wants us to be very, very close to him. When we have Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells within us, and the devil then has no choice but to leave at the very mention of Jesus' name. My friends, that is a very, very powerful promise. And finally, for today, we need to stop speaking evil of others. Verse 11, stop speaking evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law. Do not judge whether it applies to you. When we slander, speak evil, spread gossip about others, what good does that do? Is there anything edifying in that at all for the Lord? Does that help anyone? And when we bring that into the church, and I don't mean just legacy, I mean church, big C, that just destroys, we're just destroying ourselves. Any team, any force that starts talking evil about one another, that just leads to distrust. And that distrust then leads to arguing and, and infighting. And then you have no team left. The devil doesn't need to make us bad if he can just make us mad at each other. If we are willing to attack our own, then his work is that much easier. Instead, James has already instructed us to love our neighbor as ourselves. In James 2.8, he said, If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. Love your neighbor as yourself. Let's also keep in mind who we are and whose we are. We are all people made in God's image who need his love and grace. God gives us grace. I know he has given me more grace than I deserve. The more humble we are, the more grace we receive, the more grace we receive, the more grace we should pass on to others. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we come to you this morning on bended knee. Lord, we come to you humbly. Lord, continue to grow, with, grow within us that spirit of humility. Lord, that we can learn to love like you love. Lord, that we can continue to tell others about you. 
that we can spread that love to one another. Lord, may we always strive to be more like you. Lord, we ask these things in your precious and your holy name. Amen.